All right, very good. Someone wants to lead a call. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit out of the context, so I haven't caught up with all the messages. So maybe you, Hillary, could, could start, or Cam. Yeah, sure. So, um, sorry, I just got off the bike trainer and everything's like pinging on me. Uh, so one of the things we were talking about yesterday was trying to filter out the papers appropriately to get all the relevant clinical papers so we could pull the relevant info so we could proceed with the task. And um, on the afternoon call today with everybody, I think it kind of sounded like there were three different groups approaching the exact same problem of compartmentalizing or categorizing the papers and the data set. Um, and so we kind of had like a group chat pulling everybody in. And I think I pulled Michael in also. Um, I'm not really sure what the conclusion of that was because there's a bunch of computer stuff a little beyond me, but it sounds like a bunch of people are working on that task. So I think in order to move forward, one of the things we have to do, at least in terms of like looking at the data in the existing set, is I think we have to wait on these other teams to figure out how to categorize that. Um, that sounds good. Uh, maybe Michael, you could uh, give us a, a quick uh, summary on what's what's happening with the filtering stuff. Yeah, so um, I sent out the uh, data set yesterday that was the filtered by the search terms cross-reference with filtering by sort of the, the organism terms, COVID, coronavirus, and virus. Um, the other thing I, I brought up earlier today after seeing that discussion you mentioned is that PubMed actually has a labeling system where they ca characterize the articles uh, into different categories, including case reports and like 30 others. Um, and it's not perfect because um, they're overlapping and I've, I've found false negatives cases where they don't label something a, a particular category and I can see that it clearly is. Um, but it might be something to go off of where we can look at a group like case reports and see what are the, the terms that separate that from every other class of document and are there things that we're missing that we can look for. Um, so what I'm, I'm trying to figure out right now and I mentioned this in the Slack channel uh, and Cameron chimed in on this is I'm Surprised I couldn't find an easy answer to this because it seems like a lot of people want this is if we have labeled groups of documents like case reports, clinical trials, systemic reviews, whatever, uh, and we want to compare entire groups of documents to figure out which terms separate them, what is the, the most appropriate way to do that? Uh, and that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out at the moment. Makes sense. Uh, maybe Ben, have you guys done anything similar with the annotations? Because I know you're using some supervised learning. Uh, yeah, so um, we have somebody presently working on making those annotations, um, but I don't think we've yet reached the point of feeding those to um, to train some kind of a classifier, if that was what the question was. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that could be a step in it, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen anyone in, in the other teams uh, solve this yet, so maybe, Michael, if, if you could, that would basically oh, yeah. propagate <laughs> uh, across different groups. Okay. Um, so I, I mentioned like the, the best guesses that I have at the moment, uh, one of them is to just do TFIDF on the documents either individually or sort of mash them all together and compare that to the rest of the corpus. Because uh, TFIDF normally it's sort of figuring out the documents individually, what separates them from everything else. But if I average or count up across a group, that might still work. I'm just not quite sure that's yeah, that's, I was, I've done that before and I don't, it like, it makes sense intuitively that it right. would work, but I haven't gotten that input from someone who's like extremely knowledgeable in the field as what, to whether that's like a valid method. Gotcha. I, I mean, I'm glad it's, at least it doesn't feel like I'm missing something obvious because I spent a lot of time earlier today just Googling that question, which I thought would okay. have a simple answer and not finding one. It seems yeah. like a very basic, you know, thing. Right. Right. And it's funny because we're, we're stumbling upon these kind of basic things that no one done before. And even though they, they sound very simple and it, it, I almost expect them to exist, they don't. And you, to yeah. give you an example, I uh, spent significant amount of time compiling the ultimate list of risk factors. Uh, and basically there was no other place anywhere on the internet that had all of them in one single list, the environmental, genetic, and all others. And Maya spent time Googling, and we had spent time going through the papers and just combining that. 
so yeah like a, a lot of different things just don't exist because no one really needed them in in this uh kind of use case so mm -hmm. yeah it's it's completely uh visible to to all of us i guess it's like also really exciting that we're discovering or discovering all these new or in, investigating all these new methods together it's such a great way to collaborate absolutely yeah. definitely exciting all right so it seems like there there should be some progress on the this um uh, phase of of the of the team are there any updates on the the survey um pieces um, so I, John connected with Maria, who's, you know, we added to the group earlier. I don't know if she introduced herself, um, but she did survey writing for a long time and she had some ideas about how we might be able to get around IRB in terms of the way we're approaching data. And then Randall, who's a physician who also joined our group recently, um, had some really good ideas about groups that were already soliciting this information from people in a, an appropriate and ethical way. So. Um, he reached out to a few of them to try to see if we can connect with them, if they'll share their data with us. And um, I think I found a couple other groups that are also trying to solicit symptoms from people who are not hospitalized. Um, we didn't have a chance to dig in and see if there was any that were getting the complete package of information that we would want. So like pre-existing conditions, pharmaceuticals that they were taking for other indications and so forth. Um, so that's where we're at so far. Makes sense. Uh, all right, and I assume you guys have seen the Trello board. Um, hopefully, this current emergence structure will work for, for this team too. Again, this is just an experiment and we're testing whatever will stick and, and work for this highly, uh, you know, uh, self-organized, collaborative, creative chaos. But uh, Alessia had the chance to put all the things that we've discussed on the call yesterday. And I think we can just go through them and basically leave some updates or whatever stuff that we had progress. So one of the tasks that, um, oh, okay. The physician for this team. And I tagged you, Hillary, and maybe you can give us a quick summary if you had a chance to connect with him. Yeah, he was actually paying me a lot last night, like late last night. Um, and I copied his comments over to the Trello board, but the, the whole gist of it is um, he had a bunch of suggestions for databases that already gather that information. Okay, so. I'll, I'll touch base with him about what kind of data he would want to see as a physician and see. If, there is uh, actually a piece that um, he, um, he had a call with Maya from Risk Factors team and he defined the most impactful risk factors for, uh, for their team. And he mentioned age, heart disease, pulmonary disease, smoking, and heart transplant as the most important risk factors. So maybe you could have a 10 minute call with him and basically ask him uh, from the perspective of treatments, what are the, the most impor important things that he would be interested in learning. Sure, yeah. Sounds great. Uh, the next one, legal aspects of survey for physicians. Uh, have we got any insights on that? I assume no. All right. <laughs> logistics. Yeah, you know, logistics of communication for survey. Uh, check what is an efficient way to extract info from a specific physician, not on a global level. Uh, global level into database, logistic of communication. So maybe uh, a conversation with Randall will be helpful here too. I'm gonna yeah. add to you, Hillary, yeah. to extract that. Um, okay, next one, connection to CDC uh, people through our channel. Check if we have connection to CDC people. I think you, Hillary, mentioned that we did or something. Right. Somebody posted, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember which thread it was in, but somebody posted that they were getting contacts. They had a contact with CDC that was actively communicating with them. I um, need to connect with them and see if they can, if we can solicit to them for the information that I requested because I've not heard back from my little cold call. Mm -hmm. Okay. Need to find this person with connection. All right. Next one, uh, perform exploratory keywords with given 
uh, uh, exporter you search with given keywords. Um, okay, so I think that's dependent on um, Michael solving the problem of, of finding case studies, filtering relevant papers, Oop. create a list of questions we can ask professors, CDC. Um, do we think we're, we're able to create some sample questions or? I think we've accumulated some ideas for questions. I'm going to touch base with Randall for Precision, <laughs> which is his new title, um, and later and see if he has ideas for additional questions we should be asking in addition to the, you know, the risk factors that he mentioned to Maya earlier. Um, and then I think Alka was going to take a look. I haven't touched base with her today. So I'm not sure. She's, oh, and Maria. Let me tag Alka here. Oh, she's not on trouble. Um, okay, and the last one, survey for patients. Create survey for patients. Um, and I and the last thing that we discussed was that we have some uh, initial structure, right? But we wanted to discuss it further and, and create a document that is more um, structured, has uh, possible answers and, and stuff like that. Right. right. Yeah. So maybe Cam, you, you could help push this one forward. Um, yes, absolutely. Are you on the trail board? Um, I'm, I'm trying to find that out now. This isn't, this is a new Trello board, right? Yes. This is the secret one dedicated just, uh, okay. I have not been, I don't think so. Well, let me, uh, is there a link posted in the, Good question. I think so. Let me find. I'm going to pin this link. Okay, so I, I send it in, in Slack and I'm going to also pin to the Slack channel. Okay, so yeah, just send me an email. I will add you and I'll add you to the card for survey for patients. All right. Um, sounds great. Do you, do you guys have any other ideas or things that we should put in, in the funnel? All right. Then we're good. Thank you so much for a quick uh, sync call today. I'll upload it and I'll send the, the link uh, to Slack channel for anyone who missed it. Um, I also had a couple of conversations with other exciting people, including the guy who is trying to establish some policies with the United Nations and who. Um, so hopefully I'll, I'll add him to this channel and he'll be helpful in understanding whom we can contact on the higher level to create more of a top to bottom approach. And there's other guy, the one that led the, the webinar today. Uh, have you guys uh, had a chance to, to check that out? Yeah, I, I gave it a listen earlier. And pretty cool guy, right? Uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure, like, what's your uh, take on it as a person with the with bio background? I think he did a really good job of summarizing and explaining some pretty complex concepts in a, you know, really accessible way. So that was great. Um, definitely give it a listen. If anybody, I think everyone on here has some background, but if you don't, give it a listen. It's good. He really uh, captured all the important parts to like how the virus enters and replication and spreading and symptom relief. Yeah. And he also g uh, gave a good overview of those four drugs and how they are interacting, which was super insightful for me who has no clue how it all works. So yeah, I, I highly encourage you to check that out. If, if you share the similar background and lack of <laughs> biomedical background, and I also want to integrate him into this team just because he has such a like good understanding of the things in high level that he could possibly uh, give us some direction within specific uh, tasks that uh, pertain to treatments too. Yeah, definitely. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.